Okay, now I am laying out another ring that I was uh, in the same family as the one that, that you saw before. Uh, this is a marquee, I mean a pear shape. And what I'm doing is I'm going to darken these lines a little bit so that uh, they show up a little bit better. But I'm going to be doing the same basic principle that I did the first time, just to reinforce the idea of how this all works. And if you again notice, the paper is the one that turns. My hand doesn't turn. Um, this is one of the extended group of stone rings. This, these lines represent the facets on the stone. And uh, I'm going to darken all of these as well. So you can see the, how they look. Um, what I'm going to do uh, after I'm done with these facets, I'm going to do the rest of the, the stones and uh, try to give you the impression. Again, it's the, it's the rotation of the paper. You can see how it's rotating. Um, again, the curved line is following the hand and the way the hand runs on when drawing. And uh, this is uh, a ring that's an unusual design in the fact that it has a direction. And because it's a pair, it's rounded at the top, if you notice here. And uh, the the pencil, I mean the pencil, the um, when I'm worn on the finger, the odds are the finger will, it will be, the round end will be toward the front of the hand. And uh, that I think will look uh, much nicer than if it were worn with a point toward the front. So now what we're gonna do is what I always do all the time is we're going to transfer. So this is an opportunity to see. Using the thumbnail, as I have one nice strong thumbnail, going like this on the paper is a way of transferring on the tracing paper and getting the image transferred to the other side. And it's a symmetrical ring, so you don't have to worry about uh, making a mistake because it's going to duplicate the other side. And this is how it works. The thing is, if it were too light, say I were to miss an area, and when I look, I just open it up a little bit, hold it. Well, if I were on something else, I wouldn't have to worry about holding it. But in this case, I got it all the way. But you could go back again and rub again if you have a little spot that you've missed to concentrate on that spot. So here now you have the entire ring all together. Now I'm going to continue with the, the shading, uh, carrying the pear shape right to its conclusion here. Um, this has the facets coming out here. So I'll start with the facets and do the facets. I try to go as quickly as I can. And again, it's all these little short strokes. Even at 300%, the short strokes work out very well. This ring was originally done at original size. And right now it's at 300%. And I will reduce it down after when it's cleaned up. And I will do the illustrated path uh, rendering in the computer so that uh, it'll be a nice clean ring when it's done. The uh, obstruction there, move some material. Here's the other side where these stones are situated across from each other. The prongs that hold the stones are placed like this. Turn the paper around. Bring this down like this. This will all be scanned back into the computer and it gives me a much better uh, layout to follow rather than a rough design uh, when doing the illustrated path. The illustrated path is easier to work on when you have a nice uh, clean drawing of this. I'm going a little backwards there, but that's okay. It's a short distance. And that takes in the remainder of this, this piece, and that's how it looks. I might add just one last thing. I will add in the taper, which direction. And the taper of the finger goes forward, 
take this taper and fold it over, rub that up so they'll be parallel to each other. And then do the other line. And that gives you the location on the finger and how it looks. And that's how that works.